<laughs> that was a weird, we heard the laugh of the other stream going on right now, which kind of threw me off a little. Oh, Welcome down. to High Rollers, a rogue's gambit. We're the High Rollers crew, I'm the Dungeon Master, Mark Humes, also known as Mark Sherlock Humes. Uh, welcome, if you're watching this on the D&D channel, welcome. If you're watching this on our channel, on the High Rollers channel, hey, good to see you. Hope you enjoyed Sunday's episode. We're here because we're playing through a special Tom White. I'm adjusting the camera, I can't. Because otherwise we're like super uh, low. It's so far away, hang on, I'm going to actually Just stand. you fix that while okay. I do the introduction. Uh, if you are familiar, we are going through the Dragon Heist campaign, putting up. our own spin on it. Uh, and it, we called it a Rogue's Gambit. It's a very Mission Impossible James Pond. James Pond? James, James, James Pond. Pond. James Pond was a great Excellent game. game yeah. Excellent Which. game. James Bond style game. Uh, with a very zany cast of characters. It's turning out to be more National Lampoon than uh, than Mission Impossible currently. But we'll see how Johnny things English. develop. Yeah, very Johnny English. <laughs> um, nice. If you're not checking it out, Dragon Heist has just come out over on D&D Beyond. So yeah. you can go and pick it up now. Otherwise, it's releasing on the 18th of September. The other thing to mention that this whole mini series that we're doing, it's 12 episodes long and it's sponsored also by Idle Champions, which you can actually use to influence this game. So it's down below right now. If you play Idle Champions, whenever you complete a quest or you play in free play, you will earn points towards earning D6, which are put into a pool, which you will see on the table, which the players can choose to add to their D20 rolls of skill checks, uh, attack rolls, that sort of thing. In compensation, I will be making many of the challenges very, very difficult. They'll be fighting higher level enemies than they would normally expect to. All of that stuff to go. We've also come up with a fun rule, which a uh, user <laughs> oh, no. submitted last time, which was the last time we played, we had 20 of these dice left over, which they have now decided I get to use. Oh, <laughs> so, so idle no. champions like that. Idle champions like that idea quite a lot. So now I have oh, 20 d6 sure to use. So uh, we have to try and burn as many as we can. Yep, but not definitely. so early that we not run out. Not ours. We can't burn ours early. But you you want to make sure point. there's none left by the end of the episode. Yeah. So if there's five minutes left, but if you burn them all in like the first 20 minutes. I'm going to have all my dice to use. So, oh, okay. so it's a little yeah, fun, uh -oh. little fun play around with it. Count um, how many dice Mark rolls. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that's going to be a fun thing. But yeah, like I said, you can actually contribute to the amount of dice these guys get to play every week. Idol Champions is free to play. You don't need to pay anything to play it. You just need to download it, sign in, and just complete quests, and it will help <laughs> towards all this. <laughs> yeah. It took me so long to read what it is. The code. So you also <laughs> can get a free gold wow. chest in Idol Champions, which unlocks gear. Um, boosters, that kind of stuff. And this week we have a code that's valid for 24 hours and it is a Mark Humes chest. Yeah. All one word. I thought um, it was. I, I was like, Hey, this is what they gave us. What's a Markum? A Markum. <laughs> a Markum. <laughs> a Mark Humes chest. Uh, thank you, Clive. I'm assuming Clive Gorman was the one responsible for coming up with these codes nice. uh, for doing that. But yeah, you so can check can that out. It be Grundle. <laughs> Grundle. 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 Grundle chest. No, I think all yeah. the, the, the codes the have already been predetermined. I think they're references to Eroes and Lightfall campaigns. Ooh, yeah. really? They're actually references to our other D&D campaigns. Yeah, I've, I've seen them all. If you're not familiar with who, with who we are, with the High Rolls Gang, you can watch us normally on Sundays, 5pm UK time, that's 9am US time. We stream over on twitch.tv forward slash yogscast or twitch.tv forward slash High Rollers D&D. You can watch more of our custom homebrew campaign than there. But now, it's time to do this, which is a rogue's gambit. Mm. A quick recap on what happened last week. We did a sort of pre-title <laughs> sequence last week where the crew oh, attempted to negotiate shit. a hostage exchange with a bunch of Asmodeus cultists, mm -hmm. um, which was successful. Uh, eventually. A little bit, eventually. A little bit madcap, perhaps. There were explosions <laughs> and sleep spells and all sorts of things that went awry. Uh, nah, but <laughs> Yes, nut shots, uh, many other things. Mm -hmm. A man slowly being pressed into a wall. Uh, to the point where it killed him. Uh, but it was uh, that was the pre title sequence setting up the kind of antics to expect. But the crew uh, were given a mission by the Harpers. Uh, this mission is to meet with an agent in the city of Waterdeep, an agent who has recovered an artifact which could lead to a fortune of half a million gold Ooh. coins, half a million gold dragons um, secured in the city when people don't seem to know where it is. Uh, the crew have been told that they are meeting with this agent, codenamed Dandelion, at a place called Troll Skull Manor, an inn in a place called Troll Skull Alley within the city of Waterdeep. Uh, and that deal, that meeting, is taking place this evening uh, at 10 p.m. 
was just writing down a really important note. What was that note? Bertie bought a magical horse named Brundle. <laughs> yes, that is, uh, so you were given some time That's to purchase it. some magical gear and equipment, um, and in using that time, Bertie decided he, he bought a horse called Grundle, which he's told is magical. Um, well, he is. You fed it Norman. I fed it Norman. Your two-headed worm. <laughs> My two-headed worm. And it turns out it is actually magical. But not in the way that you thought. It doesn't need, well, I thought he didn't need to eat or poop, which is why I put Norman in there. But he does. He doesn't need to. Doesn't he mean did. he can't. That's yeah, true. <laughs> doesn't mean he won't. Uh, alongside <laughs> this incredible purchase, did. which was very well thought out and very relevant to what they're going to be doing, uh, Boomer, the Goblin Inventor Explosives Vigilante, which is one of my own homebrew classes, um, purchased a magical enchantment on his baseball bat. Oh yeah! So it does poison damage. I've got a rusty baseball bat. Fleur <laughs> purchased a grapple hook launcher. Uh, to be true Widowmaker Supreme. Widowmaker. Um, Widowmaker. She's also not going to bother with an accent this week. Which, yeah, yeah, that's fine. I liked it. Imagine I have a really nice I French accent. It. I can't. That's today. fine. Yeah. We'll Brain use no the, working. the power of imagination. I mean, it can't be worse than my Australian accent. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> that's true. Um, but well, basically, the equivalent of that is uh, two times per day, equivalent to the spell of Misty Step. So you can teleport oh, okay. up to 30 two feet, but you can go like upwards and stuff like that. Um, mm. Cool. So you basically have like a 30 foot grapple launcher that will propel you to a point within 30 feet and you can use it twice per day before it needs to be recharged or reloaded or something. Um, I can't even remember what Aquamamba bought. Turtlenecks! That's right, you ordered <laughs> oh, a series you know, of turtlenecks. Oh, we remember that yesterday? Yes. Yeah. A series of really turtlenecks. Um, just that's it and that, that was it, I think. Embroidered. Embroidered turtlenecks. With the, With the what was it, Mamba's Mercenaries. Yes. Yes, <laughs> okay. I actually had a list of stuff and I fulfilled the list, but he's annoyed that I bought a horse. I got a potion of speed as well. A potion well, of a speed. Potion you of took it speed. very literally. <laughs> yes. Well, yeah. You took his, his, his instructions. List of very, very literally. You wanted a magic item and a potion. You did. <laughs> well, I you, got, a magic you got there. <laughs> yeah, I got that. Well, uh, the first question I ask you is, is do you do anything in the time leading up to 10 p.m. when you're going to travel to this, this inn called Trollskull Manor in the city of Waterdeep um, to meet with Dandelion, codenamed Dandelion. Um, is there Probably going to get very drunk at the bar. <coughs> so you go but straight to the original meeting point. I'm oh, uh, the Yawning Portal. The Yawning Portal, I'm going to go in there okay. and get some early drinks in okay. to take the edge off. How many drinks? Quite a lot. Okay. Mm. Should I Great. roll for how many? On a d20. Well, let's see. <laughs> uh, first of all, the, the, the Yawning Portal is a very bustling tavern. And it's very difficult to find a seat or get space at the bar because it is full of adventurers and mercenaries and all sorts of, of rabble uh, throughout it. Dernan, the, the, the barkeeper, his big sort of lamb chops that trail into a moustache. He's got like a real Victorian style uh, handlebars into, into mutton chops. Um, wearing like a loose shirt with a rag is just quietly cleaning the desk uh, whilst uh, the barmaid, a very kind of bright blonde buxom barmaid is serving drinks to everybody. Um, and you can see that this, this tavern is full of all sorts of strange figures. There's a large, uh, muscular, barbarian-looking man with like purple face markings who appears to be clutching some sort of small rodent. Uh, there is a wizard in a very elaborate red uniform, uh, barking orders and ordering around a very short, hairy-looking dwarf. Uh, there is a very fabulously well-dressed man with a hat with a large feather in it. Quite a large gut, but he carries himself very well and he's covered with men and women hanging off his every word as he's just buying drinks and surrounding himself with uh, praise. Um, yes, all sorts of, of figures uh, can be found in the Yawning Portal. I'm just going to barge through, okay. using my cane to hit shins and stamp on toes and okay. stuff. Get out of the way, I'm walking here! Okay. Excuse me! You get onto the bar and you see a very curious uh, eyebrow raised from Dernan. Dernan! Dernan! Pick me up! <laughs> he, looks, he leans down. Pick me up! You don't accommodate to my folk very well! He points to a set, set of boxes that lead up to the bar with a sign for halflings and gnomes. You're kidding me, right? That's the best you got? He just points at it and Look at my cane! Look at my cane! All you can see from his perspective is the tip of the cane. Tip of the cane. <laughs> just waggling. It's made of gold, pure gold. I think someone that owns a pure gold cane is just gonna get on some boxes with halfling scribbled carelessly on the side. He looks down. 
and just says, if the halfling wants a drink, yeah. I think you Terrible might. service! Is that some sort of bulletin board where I can leave a rating? Because it would be a one star! That's all I'm saying! He just, just smacks. <laughs> Unbelievable. I'm gonna, I'm gonna start climbing on the boxes. <laughs> he like I'm nods. Gonna, I'm gonna be cursing and mumbling off. <laughs> Moves over. What can I get you? Uh, let me see. Something There straight. is a large board covered in the names of all different alcoholic beverages. Red Dragon Crush, uh, Star mm. Wine, all different, these fancy sounding uh, alcoholic names, all with different prices, but they're quite pricey. Most of them here are ranging in the sort of two gold margins, which is very pricey for a, a tavern. I need a quick hit. I need something straight, hard, and fast. Just like me, <laughs> you understand? He nods, goes over, pulls out a very uh, dark looking bottle, um, engraved with moons and stars, pulls out a, a very thick looking liqueur in a small shot glass, puts it down. Hold on. Hold. I got my own glass. I'm going to get the cane out and push a little butt on the side. <laughs> no. And a tiny flat glass. disc comes out. Right. That then pops then, up. then pops up. He nods. Hygiene. He holds his hand out. It's five gold. Five gold? You said you wanted something strong. I'm looking at the board. Is it five gold? Yeah, there's one on there which is just called, uh, it's called Oni Breath and it's five gold. Ugh. What a rip. It better be good. Better knock my socks off. He just nods, takes the five gold, pours it into your cup. Thank you. And then takes the bottle back, nods. He seems to give a glance to a couple of um, assistants uh, who kind of just hover around you. Um, yeah. Just lick it back. Them? Well, just, yeah, you notice that there are some people around, but it's a very packed-looking bar. Oh. Constitution. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's an 18 plus. Okay. Um, where's my basic stuff? <laughs> <laughs> I mean... How strong is not his character 18. sheet? 18. Uh, you... My character sheet's on D&D Beyond, so I didn't forget anything. You feel... <laughs> This momentary kind of wash, like the strong aniseed-like taste as it goes down your throat, and it, you feel this intense burn as it goes down. As soon as it hits your stomach, um, your vision just blurs. You can barely keep your eyes open. Um, whatever it is, has hit you extremely <laughs> what an hard. Eighteen? <laughs> you need some dice. Poison! I'm being poisoned. <laughs> Someone's uh, out to get me. I'm very popular. <laughs> and then. Fall off back. You just fall, you fall over, and in fact, the assistants that have been waiting, one catches you, drags you over to a corner where there are several other slumbering drunks and just kind of props you there. I remember weird stuff like, I thought I had a higher DC. <laughs> and then that's it, you pass out. <laughs> Anybody else doing anything before this meeting? Uh, Is this just after he fed the... the... Probably. Yeah, yeah. Can, I, can I burst into the place? <laughs> into the yawning pole. And okay. just go up to the bar and say, Hey, uh, real important, do you have anything that can make a horse that doesn't poop poop? Dernan just shakes his head, doesn't, no! doesn't say anything. No! <laughs> then I'll charge back outside. <laughs> okay, just charge out. And uh, I'll Where give someone else a turn for that. <laughs> She's really intrigued to see how far he's going to go to and bring gonna, back Nerf. And I'm going to stand behind Grundle and just watch. <laughs> <laughs> Come on! Come on! <laughs> Okay, you just stand outside, I'm guessing, the stable of the yawning portal where you have stored Grundle. Uh, yeah, sure. I mean, I guess I just walked him up to the front door. I guess <laughs> he's just outside the front door. Um, yeah, and you just wait at this horse. I'm just going to stand there and watch him. Okay, Fleur and Boomer. Can I be arm wrestling someone in the bar? Sure. Yeah, like, uh, uh... who would you pick? There's uh, no shortage of opponents. Um, burly looking half-orcs. Uh, one man who looks like he might have some giant blood. Uh, huge, tall, long, you know, white hair, bluish tinted skin. Um, uh, there is, is a lizard man, uh, literally a lizard man in sort of hides and bone like armor, um, sitting with a bunch of adventurous looking folk. Yeah. Is there anyone where like the crowd's thickest and there's like lots of people kind of watching? Yeah, probably the, um, the very large, very wealthy looking man has got the biggest amount of people around mm. him. Um, this feathered plumed hat, you can see a kind of very elegant rapier by his side um, and he's got an enormous crowd around him but they don't appear to be like watching for arm wrestling, they're just 
enamored with him as he regales some story of some dungeon that he explored and some treasure that he located at some point. Okay. I'm gonna go up to him. Okay. Good night, mate. Uh, the, the, gra- the gathered crowd looks for a moment, seemingly a little stunned by the appearance of a goblin. And they kind of <laughs> eye you momentarily. And this larger man looks around. <laughs> What's this? A goblin! How wonderful! <laughs> My goodness, how things have changed. Hello there, little creature. Hello there. Gobby git. Fancy a wrestle. <laughs> uh, a wrestle? Yeah. As in... <laughs> oh, what? You mean like a, some sort of greased up competition? Ah, oh, no. But bless you for noticing the grease on my face. It's from something I made now. I go, uh, I mean an arm wrestle. <laughs> well, I'm afraid that uh, I don't have any requirements to neither prove anything or to win any money. No, it's just a bit of fun, mate. Ah, well, a bit of fun. I'm on a pose too, but um, not really for me. Uh, you, however, I know a few people. Minsk! Minsk! Oh, no. This goblin here is looking for someone to arm wrestle! Oh, no. uh, and and you, hear, you hear a, uh, what? Goblin? Uh, and this man who is holding a tiny little hamster kind of puts it in like a little pocket that has been purposely built into his armour. Uh, comes up and he's like, Goblins don't arm wrestle, goblins stab! Who are you? What are you doing? G'day, watcher. You're a big fella. I'm Boomer. You're a goblin. Who is talking? Not the stabbing. Uh, this is confused, Minsk. <laughs> what um, species is this? He's human. Human. <laughs> yeah. He looks, he's bald-headed, completely bald-headed, but he has purple like markings on his face, um, a large great sword, and yeah, just this tiny little hamster sticking out of his pocket. Um, and he looks down at you very confused, not quite sure what to make of you. <laughs> Minsk, Minsk, it's, this goblin is, is obviously uh, not your typical uh, typical goblinoid type. He's looking for someone to arm wrestle. I, th- I think that you would prove quite the challenge. <laughs> Minsk looks down at you. I will break puny goblin. That is not good. I, look at the arm. I will crush. Oh, don't worry, mate. I'll bounce. Come on, board. All right, Minsk will... Uh, Minsk will wrestle tiny puny goblin. And he kind of puts an arm down on the table and the crowd is all like, oh, and you see quite a few people are beginning to gather around. He's pretty big, isn't he? Oh yeah, he's massive yeah. and he's got massive arms. Okay. Um, I'm guessing a strength Boo! check. You will help Minsk, yes? Give me your wisdom and courage. Use them idle champions dice. Uh... Well, for those about to die, let's okay. do it. So it's just a pure, pure strength check. <laughs> okay, uh, that's a lot of dice you've just taken there. He's got a lot of dice in his hand. Oh. Uh, the dice Ooh. off. Let's roll, mate. Oh, he rolled three. Oh, that's a lot oh. of ones. He rolled three, very good. Okay, I got roll more than three. one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, plus thirteen 26. is twenty-six. Thirty-nine. Plus Plus, uh, plus three <laughs> is... Thank you, whoever like said 29. the mark should keep to 29. So, you rolled 5d6. How many did you roll? Five. Oh my god, okay. I rolled a 17 and this is Minsk. Uh, yeah. uh, you put a hand around uh, this, this, your tiny little goblin hand fits into his palm. He holds it and you're beginning to doubt if this was a very wise idea. No, Boomer has you, no doubt. Okay. He does so anything Boomer is very lot. confident. Uh, you begin straining, and you're like putting all the pressure you can. <laughs> in. And he's just not budging. And then Mert, this larger fellow, is like, Minsk, he started. And he's like, oh! Boomer <laughs> <laughs> is thrown through, like, into a wall. You slam against a wall with a loud impact. Uh, as, yeah, like, Minsk just taps his arm and it's just like, I win! <laughs> Thank you, boo! You just, he just hear taps. this laughing from my crater. It's, it's, like, like, it's a pained <laughs> laughter. There's probably like a, you oh. probably bruised some ribs. Oh. oh, that was hilarious, mate! <laughs> Get rid of those five. Oh my goodness. Um, yeah. Good oh. one! Good oh. one! You I always had you there. Boomer can definitely put down that he has now arm wrestled uh, the famous Minsk. 
Um, mm, the space pygmy boo. <laughs> yeah, it's miniature space hamster boo. Uh, so tempting. Um, <laughs> you are all in the yawning portal. Uh, you wait for a long time, Bernie. Mm -hmm. uh, waiting Bertie. to see if Bertie, Bernie, whatever. <laughs> it doesn't really matter anymore. Um, I'm gonna just sit on the rooftops. Like I'm gonna, watching. I'm gonna have a little explore on the rooftops okay. around, and then I'm gonna come and sit back and like. Okay. Back and see what's going well, on. you. Oh, can I try my grappling hook? <laughs> yeah, you can play around with it. Yeah, well, for sure. Yeah, like, on grunt. Zoom around. No, on grunt. No. <laughs> oh. Um, yeah, you all. Yeah, so, right. so Fleur begins zipping around like Spider Man around water deep, practicing the grappling hook. <laughs> Bertie, you wait for a long time. Um, no poop. Oh. Uh, but eventually, <laughs> a series of guards do come over, uh, and they're wearing the kind of blue and silver uniform of the the city watch. Mm -hmm. um, they make their way over and like, oi, oi, oi! What's all this then? You can't be having a horse out here uh, without being tied up, sir. Wait, 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 wait. No, no, he's not doing it. Wait, 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 wait. No, he's not pooping yet. What are you waiting for, sir? You what? can't have your animal. Defecating on the streets of War Deep. This needs to. Be, this creature needs to be in a stable, sir. It's okay. I don't think he's gonna. He doesn't poop. Oh, you're gonna take. You need to take him to a stable. Well, he's not gonna poop. What's the problem? You need to take him to a stable. Can't yeah. have just wild horses walking around. <coughs> he's not walking around. He's just standing here. I'm, well, I'm <laughs> waiting for him to poop Norman out. <laughs> One of the guards is like, "This guy's a fucking idiot, Jim." <laughs> like, I'm getting that. Thank you, Bill. <laughs> hey, I can hear you. I'm. I'm very smart, thank you. You need to take your horse. Horse. Elsewhere. You need to put him <laughs> in a stable or actually go somewhere with him. You can't just have him out here in the street. I mean, he seems relatively. Yeah, I'm telling you that you are not allowed to do that in the city of Waterdeep. But I'm telling you, he's already stable. Wait, do you understand that I'm a member <laughs> of the watch? No, I do, but I don't understand. You're telling him he's, he's stable. He's stable. <laughs> DM or RP? <laughs> I'm going to ask you one more time, sir. Right. I'm being very polite. <laughs> you need to take your horse to a stable, a place where they keep horses. Oh, but I, I can take him back where I bought him. I don't care. You can't just have him out on the street. Alrighty, come on, Norman. No, wait. Oh, no, you're grand or you ain't, Norman. <laughs> Come on! I think Tom All is right. losing it. <laughs> Where Let's does go. Tom end and where do he begin? So you just take Grundle's reins and walk. Just walk off and elsewhere. <laughs> That's all he wanted. He'd like a, trying to clear a homeless man off the street. He just <laughs> needed you to leave. See ya. Um, as they move in. Lovely so, to you. Um, around the yawning portal, <laughs> unless there are many antics that you can get up to, but uh, the yawning portal is is a district or two districts away from Trollskull Alley. Um, is there anything else you want to do? It's time. I assume I've passed out. How long am I passed out? I mean, you probably like, how long does, you know, like an hour? Okay. But you wake up, I mean, not passed out. You didn't even need to pass out. You were just incredibly drunk. Oh, that's the trick. Yeah. yeah, like this this alcohol was incredibly strong. Um, yeah. You wake up uh, slurred, uh, dr you know. <coughs> uh, what time is it? Hungover. So tell me the time. It's, it's early evening. It's like probably like seven, eight o'clock by the time you've arm wrestled and drank and zipped around the rooftops and led the horse around. Um, but eight, <laughs> I'm eight, yeah. still wrestling. I'm just like, yeah. Yeah, like after Minsk beats you, quite a few younger adventurers kind of come up and want to wrestle you. But you know, most some of them you beat, some of them beat you. Like it's you know, but it becomes like a, a fun game of yeah. arm wrestle the goblin, <laughs> and it becomes a bit of a spectacle of people just see it as this. <laughs> how how quaint! <laughs> I'll wrestle the goblin. Um, and yeah, like it seems that most of the people here are adventurers, so they're not even that put off by the fact that you're a hideous creature that oh. ate oh. things. Oh, I'm adorable, <laughs> love That's subjective. No, no, you're a goblin. I'm cute. My mum says I'm For cute. A goblin. Other goblins think you're cute, maybe. But my uh, mum says I'm the best looker of the lot. Probably. <laughs> I miss my mum. So yeah, she so does us. <laughs> She's dead. She's, she's very dead. She feels my face. <laughs> so what's the plan? Uh, what time did we have to meet? 10 o'clock. 10 p.m. Okay, so we're almost. Yeah, and you've, uh, it's, you know, it's not far. It's maybe like, maybe a 30 minute walk over to Trosco Alley. I'm going to go out and get us some fresh, fresh air. Get outside. Okay. Walk off the cobwebs. Yeah, Waterdeep is a bustling city. 
Um, it's full of, the people of Waterdeep are very varied. You notice when you're walking around that nobody here, the fashion is very unique. People are very expressive. They wear what they want. Um, you can see folks, uh, you know, where there's no real, doesn't it appear to be that gender identity is a big thing? Like people just wear what they want. So people just dress however they, they particularly feel like. Um, there is a large, uh, you know, variant in the races, elves, humans, tieflings, dragonborn, dwarves, everybody seems to be represented in the city. Um, yeah, it's very colorful. Uh, you can see that some sort of parade is being planned around the main street as well, uh, called the Festival of Wonder. That seems to be being planned out around the city. You can see that there are statues of automatons being built. Um, you can see that uh, there are kind of like little stages uh, being built ready for performances um, that you notice around the city. I'm gonna get out a tiny notebook and note okay. all these things down as if it's important for planning purposes. Mm -hmm. Uh, and make my way to the actual meeting point. I like how Aquamamba is making these notes, but Chris Trot is not. So therefore, <laughs> Aquamamba won't remember any of them. No. Yeah. He's writing, like, really scrawly, like, scratchy notes. I'll remember this. All right. He's also still drunk. Yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah. Tearing through the paper. Yeah. Uh, uh, and then what, you want to head over to Troll Skull Alley? I'm going to scout. I'm speaking out loud. Okay. I'm going to scout out the meeting point. Make sure nothing unsuspect is happening. Okay. So you're going to head over there? I'm going to be real stealthy about it, but drunk still. Okay. So the rest of you, Aquamamba just vanishes. None of you know where Aquamamba's gone. <laughs> um, yeah, what are the rest of you doing? Um, can I, I imagine like I'm in the centre of a crowd of people now, just laughing. Yeah, like the tavern is very around. busy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, this is a lot of fun, mate, but do you know what I find even more fun? That's them entertainment barges, eh? It's floating on the ships, on the, on the water, having a party, it's great. Anyone know of any that's coming to town? Uh, yeah, M the Mert is just like, oh yes, yes, there's been quite a, yes, there's been quite a lot of those going down, isn't there? Um, oh my God, I'm <laughs> Kim, I've got a fucking switch for it. No yes, <laughs> yes, yes. Um, there's uh, there's been a few that have docked in the ship. Some Luskin fellow has brought a few in. I believe it's called. I'm not quite sure of the actual ship's names, but folk have been calling it the Sea Maidens Fair. Um, some fellows brought in a, a trio of barges, uh, all decked out for entertainment. Casinos and dancers, performers. Yeah, it's quite wonderful, quite wonderful. I've been enjoying a few winnings of the old casino and all of all the people around him are like, ha 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 ha, Merv, you're so funny, ha 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 ha. It's just like, big... oh yes, I'm very funny, very witty. Rah. Is this the big decadent guy? Yes, the big decadent guy, right. yeah. Um, yeah. It's just like, yes, I think you might have a bit of trouble, though. I mean, I'm not sure they'll be very accommodating of a goblin, I'm afraid. The yawning oh. portal, of course. People here are a bit more open-minded, but, um, yes, I'm not sure if the Sea Maiden's Fair is really the best place for a goblin. Well, why not? Well, people and a lot of people here, well, a lot of, a lot of people have family killed by goblins, you see. It's uh, adventurers, it's a common occurrence for us to go in and clear out goblin dens and meet your kind, but a lot of folk think that you eat babies and do all sorts of rancid things Aww, like that. Aww, that, uh, that was me old fellas, and uh, I don't associate with them anymore, anyway. I'm afraid that you'll find people are quite judgmental of monstrous goblins. I'm not a monstrous, I'm a lovable skimp. Yes, <laughs> so, yes, it, and we all agree, don't we? Oh, yes, Murph, yes, Murph, Murph, but, uh, some other folks you might struggle with, but uh, yes, well, if you do, by all means, head down to the Sea Maiden's Fair. Um, not sure who's running it, some Luskin fellow. Haven't had the opportunity to meet him yet, but I've heard he's quite the gambler. Ah, oh, well, maybe you can smuggle me in, mate. Dress me up like one of your friends here. Oh, possibly, yes. I'm not planning on going there. I'll tell you what, Goblin. You ever fancy going down to the old Sea Maiden's Fair? You come and find, uh, you come and find old Mert. I'm normally around here, ha <laughs> ha, deep in the port. Sounds like a date, Merty. All right, sounds good. What's your name, Goblin? Boomer. Ah, oh, very good. Boomer. Boom, boom. <laughs> <laughs> and Boomer's just going to, like, laugh at ha, 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 ha. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. <laughs> yeah, everybody seems to be in good spirits at that. Uh, he turns back to his adoring crowd, um, who he then begins regaling some tale about journeying into a place called Under Mountain, recovering some sort of treasure. What was his name again? Mert. 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 Yes, you can make um, you can make a straight up intelligence check if you want to know a bit more about him. He's he's a semi-famous figure. 
10. <laughs> you might have heard the name Mert. Generally referred to as Mert the Moneylender, just a very wealthy ex-adventurer. That's probably all you would know. Okay. Yeah. Sweet. What about Fleur Have you gone all the way back to where the... <laughs> oh, no, no. I, I think he'll circle around at some point. <laughs> he just does like a big... Leap. Yeah, <laughs> but you go first. No, I'm, I'm again, just... So, uh, are you guys just going to hang out? I, I, I feel like she probably would have scouted... Made her way the, to the... The <clears throat> place. Probably... Okay. Maybe bef a little bit before, before Aquamamba. Aquamamba. Maybe a bit uh, better than Aquamamba? Maybe a bit better. She probably sat a bit further back, looking through her scope at the alley for a bit, okay. and on a rooftop, okay. and then sees him drunkenly okay. stumble. Oh. <laughs> I note down that the terrain is unstable. <laughs> the whole alleyway seems to be under some sort of mystical spell. Okay. Where everything seems to move. How big am I in relation to the horse out of interest? I mean, you're pretty big, but a horse is large. You're, still a horse. you're like, you know, nearly seven foot, but a horse is a long. horse. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So I can still ride it. Yeah, yeah, you can still okay, ride cool. it. Yeah. I didn't think I was just going to um, crush it. Yeah. No, 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 no. Jesus. You won't just crush it. <laughs> um, do you make your way over there, Bertie, or are you just wandering around, lost and aimless? I think I'll just enter the bar where everyone else is with Grundle. <laughs> <laughs> well, so far, <clears throat> Boomer is still in the Yawning Portal. Mm -hmm. These two have gone off to the location that you know that you're meant to meet this guy later on. Oh, right. Well, I mean, I'm not looking. I, I just assume they're still there. Okay, so you try and enter the Yawning Portal. I, yeah. You are immediate. First of all, Grundle won't fit what? through the door. <laughs> I, I mean, okay. He's a horse. He's a horse. Yeah, but can I pull uh, it? Uh, yes, but you have to like duck under. Um, and as you try and pull like, Grundle in, <laughs> you just hear the barman, this guy with the big lamb chops, is like, Stop that! No, no horse. Well, I was looking for a place to put him. They told me to put him somewhere. Stables. Oh, God! <laughs> Boomy! I miss my friend! <laughs> you just hear it, feel a tapping on the back of your thigh. All right, Bertie, mate. Yeah, I miss my friend, Boomy. Wait, I'm your friend, mate. Yeah, but you're not Norman. <laughs> I mean, you had that thing for, what, a day? What, Norman? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, I guess, but he was my friend. Yeah, well... He dangled and stuff. That's that, that's what you get when you feed your friends to your other friends. <laughs> Look, he wasn't meant to eat him! He doesn't mean to eat him his word. He doesn't oh, mean to eat him. Oh, Bertie, 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 come on now. I don't know what my voice is doing, but... <laughs> <laughs> All right. Stick with it. Just go with it. I've been thrown across the room too many times. Where's the other guys? You know, Amanda and, and, oh. the, and the shooty one. <laughs> They're probably off of that bar, was it? The troll thing. Huh? Well, you know, the job we're on. Got to meet the dandelion fellow about some stone. Oh, uh, will he care about the horse? Uh, yeah, sure. Oh, God, i got to put him somewhere. Come on, mate. Let's let's go wander over. You come with old Boomy here. Okay, come Boomy, on. let's go. <laughs> if you want, I can ride the horse and then you can ride me. That sounds like an excellent <laughs> idea. That is the best bloody idea you've had all day. So you're riding the horse and then Boomer rides you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, the horse probably, it probably wouldn't even notice the weight of a single goblin, so it's not, <laughs> it's not bothered. Cool. Um, so for those of you that make your way over there, <laughs> Uh, yeah. Troll, Troll Skull Alley is a fairly worn down part of uh, Waterdeep. Um, I think I can flip this and show you guys. So the vague layout, unfortunately the audience won't be able to see this, but you guys can. Mm -hmm. um, so it's uh, split into its ramshackle buildings. You can see that there are lots of businesses um, and various other, you know, trades houses, little, uh, you know, actual physical residences and things like that scattered around. Yeah. Um, uh, but it's it's generally pretty worn down. It looks like a pretty pretty poor part of the city. Uh, Troll Skull Manor is right by the north entrance, and it's mainly identifiable by the fact that it was probably once an old manor house. It even has a small parapet with like a little uh, corner buttress um, that looks out onto a kind of larger square right by the northern entrance to the alleyway itself. Um, around it, there are several other businesses. One appears to be some sort of. Uh, uh, like herbalists or florists with like a rooftop greenhouse. There's also one building which just has a tiger's eye agency and it just has like a single cat's eye for its symbol mm -hmm. um, nearby. Uh, outside the building there is some halfling entertainers, 
Um, some people just going about their work, uh, just, you know, like artisans, people doing like carpentry out in the main sort of like square. But the actual inn itself appears to be fairly busy, few people inside. Um, and yeah, it looks to be the kind of largest building in this this little region of the city itself. Um, scouting around what? So the two of you who are scouting, scouting around, why don't you both make perception checks for me? Mm. And then based on your check is, I will let you ask me some questions and then I will answer them, uh, depending mm. on your check. So like, what are you looking for, Wait. like, you know, et cetera? Mm, <laughs> should use those dice. 11. 11, yeah, don't forget you've got the dice pool that you can use. Um, so, uh, yeah, uh, we'll start with Fleur. Fleur, what, what are you looking for? Any um, figures that are sort of skulking around or some people who look like they might sort of be like... Waiting? Either waiting or just like shifty eyes. Okay, like and, you're doing, and you're doing this before you're meant to meet this person. You're kind of scouting yeah. out beforehand, right? Yeah. Okay, so you look around and generally from your, your view of the area, you don't think that there is anybody who appears to be shifty or waiting. Um, the musicians appear to be genuine. There's uh, a bunch of halflings. Two of them are playing instruments and two of them are doing some sort of acrobatic dance. They've got like a little cup, like a tin hat with a, who, where a little boy is sat collecting coins um, for the little troop. Um, you do see you see a noble woman enter the, the the tiger's eye agency, but again she just appears to be a regular noble woman. Um, there's uh, a shopkeeper working in the herbalists. Yeah, nothing particularly out of the ordinary. Uh, Aquamamba, what are you looking for with your check? I was looking for the same thing. Anyone shifty? Okay. Like magnifying glass that comes out. Okay. okay. <laughs> it took me a few tries. It won't really help. A magnifying glass won't help you. It's look. tiny. It's like a monocle. Right. <laughs> but it's a magnifying glass. It's meant for looking at things really close up, not <laughs> scanning an area. Drunk. You're still using it, okay. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. I'm looking for that and also um, going around the Troll Skull Tavern. Okay. Um, escape points. Okay. Basically, yeah. good points to like, if things okay. go south, sure, sure, sure. are there any sewage. <laughs> <laughs> Plumbing that you can Plumbing, use. Like, <laughs> back doors. So the, the Troscon Manor is, is a fairly large inn and you can tell that it's got plenty of rooms upstairs, all of which have windows. The windows aren't barred, they've just got wooden shutters on them. Uh, there is a back door that is, uh, leads into a rear part of the alleyway. Um, yeah, yeah, I mean, plenty of exits. Like, you definitely wouldn't be trapped in that building. If, if anything went down, there'd be plenty of avenues to escape from. You could go upstairs, climb out of the windows, you could get up onto the roof. There's like a skylight that you could get up onto the roof. Or you can just leave through the back door, or you can go through the main entrance. Um, the alleyway itself, again, like Flo, you don't really spot anybody acting suspicious. Uh, Looking at the opposite establishment on like the second, like the top. Mm -hmm. top yeah, no, floor. you don't. You don't spot anything. Nobody <coughs> in wait. Nobody preparing. You don't see everything's so blurry. <laughs> um, even in your drunken state, it all seems uh, to be fairly, fairly square. Square. <laughs> okay. Written down. Um, Kosher. Inside the tavern, anybody who does head inside the tavern, you notice that it is pretty busy. Uh, there is uh, a large crowd. Most of the folks here look to be uh, plain clothes, artisans or laborers. Um, but there's a few people that take your eye, um, just kind of crowd around the bar or sat down at tables. Um, are you guys just going to wait inside? What, what's your plan for the next, like, let's say it's nine o'clock. You've got an hour before this guy arrives. What's the plan? So we're all here now. Sure. Uh, there is a there's a post outside the um, the inn for you to tie horses to, and you can see that one horse has already been tied up to it. Okay, I'm going to spend ages looking at the other knot that the other guy did, and just try, try to, to replicate, replicate it. it. Right. Well, that's an hour. That's Bertie's hour. <laughs> okay. He's, I'm going to like stay with him for ten minutes, get really bored, and then just yeah. leave. Yeah. <laughs> just, just leave. Bertie just looks like he is cop trying to copy a knot that he has seen. Over the top. Nope. No. <laughs> Boomer. Mm -hmm. What? What's he doing? Why has he got a horse? You told him. Horse. Yeah. You, you you already met the horse. Grandpa ate an ermine. Yeah. Why is the two of you? How many drinks have you had? Oh, he stinks, mate. Really Five. I think. At least. At Do you least. find that alcohol makes you more perceptive on these jobs? I feel like it brings me down to the level of other people to give them a fighting chance. That's excellent. It's admirable, is it not honorable? I mean, you 
usually you'd want to be. Can you stand still? Level. I'm trying my best. Moving around, I'm so, so sorry. everybody's swaying. I'm the boomer just starts. Swaying. Yeah. The <laughs> 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 just yeah. starts swaying. Shock sure. constitution. Thirteen. You'd probably vomit at this point. <laughs> oh, touchdown! <laughs> Out the front of the tavern. It doesn't seem an uncommon occurrence. Nobody actually seems to bat an eyelid at you throwing up. Such puddles of vomit. Yeah, yeah just like little, yeah, dry. It's pretty dry. It's like student night. <laughs> yeah, very much so. Oh wait, do I see that? Probably. That's a good idea. That's a good idea. And I'll put a finger in no, Grendel's mouth. No, no, no. <laughs> leave, leave the hot. Oh, I'd say you managed to hand? just withdraw your oh, hand yeah. before he like chomps down on it, like uh, uh, why? tries to bite I your hand. I think he very much does like to eat. I think that the, the non-eating and pooping was a lie. Fine. I've marked the meeting spot. <laughs> With puke? Right there. Whoa, bonza. Also counts as a <laughs> slick trap. It's all orange. <laughs> In case they, it's all part of the plan. What on earth did you eat, mate? I didn't eat anything. That's it's moving. Thing. That might be the problem. <laughs> also, I keep forgetting how small I am. I'm very frail. I, okay. I get very emotional when I drink. He's a very inspiring leader, isn't he? Yes. Mm. Gonna use body inspiration. Okay. On who? Okay. Whoever on speaks who? me first. Sounds yeah. like Boomer. Boomer. Oh god, here we go. I know it's only been a few hours mm -hmm. of knowing each other, but I really feel this is gonna work out. And when you see your costume, it's gonna blow you away. Not literally. Costumes. What costume? We have mercenary embroidered costumes on their way. That wasn't part of the contract? No, <laughs> it's, a, it's a bonus, if anything. That's, uh, that's gonna cost you 10 gold extra? Cost me. I like that. Yes, it's going to cost you for us. Why is it going to cost you? I'm providing beautiful turtlenecks for everybody. Oh, turtlenecks on a goblin. Yeah. Yeah. Flammable, ain't they? I think they might be flammable. I did not request non flammable material. Yeah, that's going to be 20 extra gold. Why am I paying? I don't understand. <laughs> because you want me to wear specialist equipment? I don't want you to wear as a gift. It's a gift to my team. My team are trying to bring together cohesion. Can we wear them some other time, maybe? Like when you're not there. We wear them on the there. job. We're going to make a name yeah. for ourselves. We're going to be the best mercenary troop that's ever lived in Waterdeep and beyond. Okay. What well, What's the embroidery? It's a it's a it's a snake, a blue snake, huge on the back, and it's got members mercenaries above mm. and below. Beautiful. Beautiful. Blue is not my colour, sorry. Blue Thanks is our so colour. Blue no. is our colour. The Mambas. I thought you told me earlier, after you woke up after I knocked you out, that you never wanted to see me ever again after this job. I've reconsidered. Oh, bless you, kind sir. Bless you. You've got some skills. I'll give you that. Now prove me right. Bardic inspiration. <laughs> <laughs> prove me right. <clears throat> It's yours for the next 10 minutes. <laughs> oh my god. You there is 50 minutes, minutes left before <laughs> Dandelion comes it. to the tavern to meet you. I, I'll be honest, Fleur, I'm not really a people person. I'm going to leave you to handle this. Um, Bye. I think I am. <laughs> no, we, no. We, we've got 10 minutes. Where are you going? I just walk into the bar. Okay, just, yeah. You realise the time, yes? Yeah, it's 10 to 10. I know the time, I can look at the moon. It's There's ten two moons. nine. Whoa! You see them? There, there they go! So, Akramamba is left drunk outside, or hung over outside. Boomer <laughs> enters. I'd like to okay. scout out exits as well. Okay. Same um, thing, same exits. It's not hard to see them. Yeah, no, he's just... Checking scouting. it out, yeah. You also notice, yeah, that apart from the labourers and the, uh, Apart from the laborers and the general artisans, there are kind of four figures that take main most of your interest when you walk in. Um, there is a fire ganassi, Ooh. a gold dragonborn, Ooh. Uh, a burly halfling man with big mutton chops. Um, crate like probably has like a smaller halfling boy on his shoulder, and then a, the shoulder people. a very <laughs> beautiful half elf bard uh, with flowing golden hair with flowers woven in it. Sweet. 
and where up. the the four uh, there's also the barman of troll skull manor is a particularly scarred nasty looking half orc Is anyone sat at the bar? Uh, yeah, the uh, the Fyganassi, um and the Halfling Man are both at the bar. Uh, the Dragonborn is sat down in a corner, and then the Half Elf Bard is um, just kind of strumming a lute, singing a, a very soft song from a, a small bar stool in the corner. I was just no. thinking, given the amount of explosives on Boomer, he should probably not sit next to the fire can. <laughs> <laughs> That's a very good point. <laughs> About like forty minutes in, Bertie, you get the you get the knot, and you've tied. Oh, right finally, outside. and I'll tug it a couple of times just to make sure. Oh, no. I mean, <laughs> what's the opposite of a strength check? <laughs> uh huh. Just come to it, just it just comes loose. Yeah. Oh, come on! Can oh. I see him outside going, Ah, oh, come on! Oh, damn can it! I, can I go out and tie the horse? Sure. You mean immediately, like, you're just, you loop it round, you tie it through the reins and then just tie it. You don't know why Bertie had such a problem to start with. It's okay. I'm magical. You must be. I don't know how you did it. It's okay. Come on. Okay, <laughs> just gesture him inside. Like, hey, gently we, push him inside. Are we bringing the aqua guy with us? No. I'm staring at the, the door, vacant, <laughs> dribbling. <laughs> hey, 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 I'll, I'll wear your clothes. I don't want, you're not going to fit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I thought you bought new clothes. Oh, oh. totally. Yeah, I'll wear them. Thank it you. Sounds buddy. real cool. Thanks. See ya. What were you doing, boy, what? with the horse? I already said see ya. Oh, uh, with the horse, I was tying him up. Whose horse is that? That's my horse, it's Grundle, remember? Why did you buy a horse? We've broken him you, already. No, because Tom Hazel has broken me. No, hey, so you said, <laughs> right, okay. So you told me to get something magical, I got a magic horse. Doesn't need to eat. I'm gonna walk Doesn't away, need to I'm eat. walking away from you. Silent. You go into the top of the gun. God damn, oh my god, stupid time. Oh, it's not stupid, you told me to get- I'm you... mumbling under my breath. All you got was outfits! Yeah, yeah! Whatever. <laughs> slam the door. <laughs> slam the door, which I just stop with my hand. <laughs> and then <laughs> bounces off his hand. <laughs> and walk in behind him. <laughs> okay. With all of you now inside, you see, you see the same figures. Uh, a very, a very worn down looking in. Uh, you see the same figures. The stoic looking half-orc bartender, and then the, the fire ganassi gold dragonborn. The halfling man and the half elf. Can, can and you've got about like twenty minutes at this point before. Can this I have like out. made friends with the half elf bard? So what you want to go up to them? Yeah, just like so just be like. She's in the middle of a performance. Uh, do you wait until she's finished? Know, okay, yeah. so you wait until she's finished. There's a small kind of smattering of applause, and she then puts it down and drinks like a glass of water as she's resting. Um, yeah, you can go up to her. What'd you say? That was gorgeous, darling. Thank, thank you. Looks at you, kind of like, ah, uh, goblin. Uh, thank you. Yes. <laughs> Can I see the look of panic in her eyes? It's not really panic. Enjoy. It's just like, <laughs> what the fuck? That's a <laughs> goblin. Sup? So, my name is Boomer, and I reach out hand, but then I look at it. Oh, sorry. And then I just start rubbing it really <laughs> <laughs> industriously on my on my like clothes, just like. Yeah, that's better. Here you go. <laughs> Just hold out my hand. She pulls out a small handkerchief, places it over her own hand, and then very gingerly, like, A, a pleasure. Uh, Savile Sweet Song. Uh, nice to meet you. That definitely is a sweet song you got there. So I'm told. Thank you. Say, this place is a bit gloomy. Do you know anything a bit more uplifting? Something you can really, like, you know, get, get singing behind? I mean, I... Quaffin songs. I don't have any drinking songs, if that's what you're looking for, but I have some, some more light-hearted melodies, yes. Oh, I'd love to hear them. Uh, of course. What are you doing in the city? I must admit, I've never seen one of your kind here before. Yeah, you probably heard that we eat babies, right? Something along those lines, yes. Look, it was just the one baby once, and then I left the clan, and I've never done it again. I'm a vegetarian, me. Actually, no, that's a lie. I had sausages last night for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> Quite the story. Why are you here in Waterdeep? Shits and giggles in it. Okay. 
I'm a curious oh. little person. I like mm. to see the world mm. blow quite, bits of it up. Quite clearly. <laughs> well, <laughs> this place is certainly somewhere to see sights of the world. And she gestures to Fleur, Aquamamba, and uh, Bertie, who are now entering. There's no shortage of strange people that come to uh, the Trollskull Manor, I can assure you. Um, yes, would you like me to play something? It, it, it is customary to, if you have a request, for some coin. Uh, do you know a wizard staff has got a knob on the end? I'm afraid I don't. <laughs> oh, shame. Um, I can play something a bit more upbeat if you prefer, but I'm afraid I don't know anything, any rude songs. Aww, I guess, sweet thing like you. Fair enough. <laughs> Awkwardly nods at the... Goblin flirting with her is like, mmm, yes, thank you. I don't even know if he's flirting. He flirts with everyone. It sounds like he is. <laughs> Ear, play something happy. I'll give her a gold. Okay, yeah, and she's like, very well. Um, she pulls out her lyre, um, plays a, a jaunty, fae like fairy tale esque tune uh, about a, a green knight, about a fae knight riding through the woods and slaying beasts uh, to rescue his love or something like that. It's no nice goblins in it though. Is no it? goblins. It's not killing though. goblins. No, it's not <laughs> goblins, no. Um, probably kills a few giants, but no Sweet. goblins. Um, yeah, and she starts playing that and you can see that she's very, very expert at what she does. Um, very beautiful, in fact, the song. Uh, it echoes through the chamber. Um, seems to lift the mood slightly. Um, as it rounds. What about the rest of you? Anybody else want to talk to anyone? Beautiful. Beautiful tune. Isn't that birdie? You hear that? Yeah, it's pretty, yeah. God, it's angelic. I mean, Sounds exactly like the caudal structure of Tarask took my trousers. Yeah. <laughs> but way more beautiful. Yeah, no, it's definitely the same, yeah. Have you heard that tune? Yeah, yeah, man, you know. It's, it's got south really quickly. Tarask took my trousers. It's the chorus. <laughs> so you, know, <laughs> you can't tie a knot, but you do know. I do know, I've got, I got a killer singing voice, that's, that's me, Birdie, Birdie sing, singing along. Okay, that's, um... Just trying just, to fit, just trying to fit in. Well done. What's happening? Uh, <laughs> wait, do you panic in a social environment? I need to know. C can I panic? No, no, no. Now? I think he already has. You want me to panic? No. no. I can panic? No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna hit him on the head with a go off my cane. Oh! I mean, he probably does nothing. He's a Goliath. It's like, uh. stop it. What? Why? Why? Stop it. Don't Calm stop. down. I'm, okay, okay. Right. No raging. I'm not raging. raging. No, I'm not. I'm not. I need to stay under cover. Under cover. Yes. The uh, the Figanassi at the bar, <laughs> who is hearing this conversation, <laughs> just turned round, and you can see his head like Hades from Hercules is nice. literally like a yeah. living flame. Eyebrows. I definitely eyebrows don't of want to be near that. He just turns around, <laughs> looks at you, and is just like, just so you know, saying that you need to keep a low profile, perhaps should not be saying out loud. I say it all the time, I'm a halfling. Whoa, Aquaman, watch out, that stool's on fire! <laughs> is your friend well? He's a joker. <laughs> it's a good one. Nice I'll one. Get, I'll get some water or something. <laughs> <Go on>. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Just so Bertie runs outside. And Bertie, you are looking for a sort of water, yes? Yeah, sure. Okay. Fleur, anybody you want to talk to? Him? I know. Whereas Aquamumbo is trying to now talk to this fire. I'm going to push past Aquamumbo, okay. push him out of the way, and go and talk to the fire. Okay. Yeah. So the Ganassi, yeah, he's just like, ah, yeah. oh, what have we here? I'm going to throw uh, him. Is that, are you with him? And he gestures to the door where Bertie's just gone running out. We've stumbled across each other, but I wouldn't say I was really with them. Oh, that's probably why. That one's drunk, for one. What that mean? one, I, I, I don't know, yeah. honestly. Honestly, I don't think the gods know about that one. Uh, <laughs> what brings you to Trellskull Alley? It's uh, not the, normally the place many adventurers come. Exploring the city. Never been here before, so thought we'd try a few different things. Bit of a dive crawl, perhaps. Uh, that's the only... Explanation. Well, nice to meet you. My name is Avi. Uh, I'm a smith here in Trollskull Alley. Nice to meet you. And do you come to this establishment often? You say it's a dive. Or well, are you here yourself? It's close to home. My, me and my husband, we have a, we have a smith uh, just here in the alley. Uh, when I finish at the forge, it is nice to wind down with a refreshing drink. 
Um, I don't like traveling too far out into the other districts. It's it's uh, quite elaborate and it's quite the journey. Um, no, who are you it's just I just. He just can't meet me in the eye. No, I can't. <laughs> yes, my uh, Avi, my husband, doesn't like me to run off too far, so I normally come here. Besides, uh, he gestures to the half orc. Blargan here is his good company, despite his looks. Blargan. <laughs> did you say that as I can remember? Blargan! <laughs> the half orc like frowns at you. Sort of a name is Blargan! The, oh, the fire ganassi smirks and he's like, yes, this is uh, Blargan Floon. And the You're half pulling my tiny legs! The half orc <laughs> folds his arms. It's like, you got a problem with that little man? Absolutely not, it's hilarious! Blargan. It's not that funny. What's your name? It just rolls, falls out the tongue, doesn't it? It's awful. What's your name? Aquamamba. What kind of a name is that? It's a code name. Yeah, it sounds like a dumb name. <laughs> if I had a dumb name, it'd be called Birdie. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose that's a pretty dumb name. Um, it's quite a local joke. You don't really get it unless you know Bertie. <laughs> Here he comes now! I know, does, does he come in? Yeah, I'll come back. Oh, yeah, I've completely forgotten. <laughs> okay. Hey, I'm Bertie! I'm gonna... <laughs> you don't come back, actually. Okay, no, I don't. I so don't come back. you rush out. When you rushed out, the rest of you continue having this conversation inside the tavern. But you run out and you're looking for water initially, but sure. you probably quickly oh, no. forget that purpose. Mm -hmm. um, you notice, uh, give me a perception roll. Uh, I'm going to take a couple of dice. And sure. 3d6 on this as well. Ooh, Tasty. so that's 21 plus per perception, uh, zero. The 21. 21. Okay. Um, He's using his own dice. Oh, why? Is someone stealthy? He wants to beat you. Maths. <laughs> uh, it's less than 21, whatever it is. It's not. Oh. Uh, but what you see is, you see, uh, moving through the crowd, you can see the halfling little band troop playing, um, playing their instruments and things like that. You can see that there's an old woman out for a walk. Um, a couple of... Uh, uh, reading on hang on <laughs> oh yes uh, a couple of people carrying just some bundles of cloth and vegetables and things like that you notice coming in uh from the northern entrance of the of the alleyway you just happen to notice uh, a halfling uh, no sorry a gnome uh very kind of hastily making his way towards the the tavern um you can see he's kind of got his hands in his pockets um, or at least what you think, but you notice his hand is actually holding a dagger, just making it look like he's got his hands in his pockets. Um, and he's kind of glancing behind him where three men are chasing after him. Um, and you can see that they're kind of pushing their way through the crowd, making oh. their way towards the gnome. Um, and it's at the last second you notice uh, the, the gnome glances back one last time, puts his hand in to reach for something, when suddenly there is an explosion. I need you to make a dexterity saving throw. Wow, okay. Um, I'm gonna take a couple more dice. Sure. Ooh, that's the roll. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow, nice. okay. That's yeah. a tasty roll. That's a 23, 26, dexterity saving throw, 26. Oh, I used some more dice, I'm gonna use more dice the way. Um, okay, I'm not gonna use the, the either champion's dice because I wanna get them confused with the ones I'm rolling. So I'll roll the, the normal damage on this. So what did you get, sir? Uh, 26. Okay, so you're gonna take half damage. Uh, technically, you would have had advantage on it because of your dangerous. Oh no, you're only your first level bard anyway. So uh, barbarian. Normal bard. Yeah, barbarian. Barbarian. Yeah, yeah. So, let's see. Barbarian. Burp. Uh, so you're going to take uh, half of 28 is 14. 14, so you take 14 fire damage. Well, can as I, as a reaction, reduce damage dealt to me by 1d12 plus 4? Yes, you can. Bam. 8. So I take how much damage? Uh, so it was 14, 14, so you take 6. E that's my stone endurance. Nice. Um, but you're probably knocked back a little bit, like there is a, a, a loud explosion, in fact actually... Can you make another deck save for me, but with oh. disadvantage? Oh, what? There's another explosion? No. No, 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 no! Yeah. I mean, can I use the things oh, on this? No. 
Yeah. He's magic though, right? Mm, he doesn't no. poop. He doesn't eat. <laughs> can, right, can I use the extra D, uh, D6 there, on though. this? Mm. Yes. DM wants to kill you the horse. You can use as many of those dice as you like, Tom Hazel. Three Does then. You still take half. It's a disadvantage. Yeah, oh, that's bad. Oh, 5, 10, 14, 17. I rolled 3d6. Is that with well. disadvantage? Yeah. Um, let's say he is a riding horse. So how much did you get? 17. Yeah, with he's a magic horse. So he's going to take half damage. Which is? I mean, that was 14 when I did 14 half damage. 14 damage. Oh, so, Brando! So Come on, I spent like 300 the, gold on this thing. Explosion erupts through the, the, the outside of the, the tavern, this square. Um, you hear screams, people just collapse to the ground. You kind of come to, like your forearms burn, uh, scorch marks all over you, but relatively unharmed, managing to kind of throw yourself at the last second. Yeah. Um, but the first <clears throat> thing you see when you look up is the post where Grundle had been tied to. You just see these two collapsed, charred horse bodies. Um, what the hell? Uh, <laughs> give me a, give me a, give me a perception check, just to see if you notice something else. Don't. Okay, so you, know, <laughs> you are focused on Grundle, who is now a roasted horse. So, like the end of the last episode, I'm just Grundle. <laughs> As you look over, you, the rest of you, you just hear this explosion. It probably blows out the glass in the actual tavern windows as it just erupts from the square in front Holy of the tavern ravioli. itself. That did um, not sound like one of mine. I'm just, full disclosure. Most of the tavern's <laughs> occupants just hit the deck, like covering up their heads. Escape plan Can immediately. I jump over the bar and duck behind it with my rifle? Yeah, so you duck behind it, you pull out the rifle. The half orc you can see is pulling out a great axe from behind the bar as well and is getting into a battle position behind the bar next to you. Um, but you just see dust and debris fill through the main, uh, the, the outside of the tavern um, as it just begins to settle. You, you, Really don't hear any more screamings apart from Rondo. Rondo. Um, oh, and there's just died. a horrid stench, <laughs> smoke clearing through it. Uh, Boomer, being an expertise in explosions, mm -hmm. would he be able to tell like what kind of explosion it was? I mean, like, you're still inside. Maybe, yeah. yeah, if you go outside and start looking around, mm. sure, I'll let you make an investigate yeah. check. So I'm just gonna like, I'd imagine like he would have tried to pull um, Savile. Okay, the barge, yeah. Like just, just like cover her. Yeah, she just from, dives yeah. to the ground, basically. You all right? She just like nods. She's like, you can see that there's broken glass around her, but she doesn't appear to be injured in any way. Right. She just kind of like nods in shock. Yeah. Watch where you put your feet, and then can I like nip out one of the windows that are broken? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just hop over easily enough. You can get out into the main square. When you get out into the main square, um, you can see that yeah, whatever this explosion was has caused considerable devastation. Um, there's eleven bodies on the ground. Many of the buildings have had their windows blown out, but no structural damage. It doesn't look like they're about to collapse or anything like that. Um, there is fires, but it seems contained to things like sacks. Um, on the ground and crates, none of the buildings are on fire. So there's no immediate risk. The fire, the explosion seems to be centered on the square itself. Um, it mainly just has caused, caused physical casualties rather than any structural damage. Um, yeah, like, and so you want to try and work out what caused the explosion? Yeah, like... Sure, give me a um, investigation check. I will take two dice. From the sure. Phone. 17, uh, so I rolled 10 on the 2d6s, mm -hmm. 17, so that's 27 mm -hmm. plus 5. Okay, Thanks. yeah, so you spend a bit of time analysing the scene, and the first thing that comes to your attention is uh, you, you're pretty sure that the explosion originated around um, uh, a small gnome body and a couple of other bodies just behind it. And it seems to have been a really small impact point, then, then it expanded out very rapidly. Um, and it was mainly uh, fire. It's mainly uh, a force of, uh, you know, explosion of force and hot, intense fire. Um, and you can see that most of the bodies have been really badly burned, scorched, scarred. Um, the ground itself has been blackened with soot. 
Um, but it, it originally started off as something very small and then exploded outwards. From the gnome or from bodies? Near? All you can tell is that it, um, you, I would say that you can work out that neither the gnome uh, or the, the figures behind it seemed to be aware of the explosion. Like it caught them by surprise. Their bodies have been thrown away, but where it landed, none of them would have seen it. It literally would have just erupted from behind them. Um, and it's, it's blown the bodies to the far end of the, um, far end of the thing. Can I tell if the gnome has, does he have like a lapel on, like a, a Yeah, broach you can make him? another investigation, but let me just check in what Aquamamba, Fleur, and Bertie at this point want to do. Bertie, are you still just mourning over this body? I mean, I'm like looking around now and I guess I see Boomer. You see Boomer like off into the moving thing. into the main square, yeah. Uh, and I will chase after to see if I can figure out what that was as well. Okay. Um, um, yeah, sure, give me an investigation check. Okay, uh, bam, and I'm gonna take 2d6 as well, because I'm an investigation boy. Oh, wow, wow! Natural 20, <laughs> and a six, and a five. Okay. And my investigation is minus two, so 26, 31, 29. 29, okay. <laughs> so, first things first, you recognize the gnome um, that's close to where Boomer's investigating uh, was definitely the gnome you saw moving towards you that seemed suspicious. Mm -hmm. the, there are, there are <coughs> two figures behind him that have been um, burnt to a crisp. They're both wearing dark cloaks. Both of them had long swords and hand crossbows and leather armor. Um, and you <coughs> notice that they both, on their wrist, they both have the tattoo of a winged black snake. Oh. Okay. Um, yeah. And yeah, you you. But the thing that you kind of remember is you think there might have been three of them when you first saw them before the explosion. Um, there were three of the men chasing after the gnome, but there's only two bodies here that you can see um, mm. that have been blown in the same direction as the gnome itself. Uh, Fleur, what are you doing? Can I go outside? How tall are the roofs around? Um, probably no more than sort of uh, 40 feet tops, 30 feet. You can probably, there's short buildings and then there's tall buildings. The short buildings are about 20 feet tall and then the tall buildings are about 40 feet. I'm just returning my bardic inspiration dice. Yeah, the time's gone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's gone. <laughs> that's so far gone. Um, can I climb up onto one of the 20 foot Yeah, do you want to use your thing or do you just want to climb up normally? Actually, I'll climb up onto the one of the larger ones and use my to get up to the yeah, taller one. Okay, so just give me an athletic check just to climb up the first one. Would you like to use any dice? Three dice. We can't leave him with any. Yeah. No. Uh, uh, 24. Yeah, 24. Plus your normal skill, bonus. 26. 26. Yeah, you easily kind of scramble up the building. There's no real uh, decent footholds, but you manage to leap up, grab onto like a, a you know, wall sconce you know, use that to hoist yourself up and then grab onto some loose tiles, pull yourself up, and then you use the grapnel launcher to pull yourself up onto the top rooftop. Um, when you get up to the top, just make a perception check for me. Do it, yeah, we can. Do it, yellow. <laughs> 21 on the dice. 27. 27. So you notice a couple of things. Um, you notice that in the, there is a woman who was up in the, uh, the botanist shop with a kind of second floor greenhouse. And you can see the greenhouse has been destroyed and she's peering down on the square. And you think that whoever she was must have had a good view of what happened um, from her position if she wasn't knocked out or hurt by the explosion. Um, whoever they were must have been, uh, it looks like a woman from this distance, but you're not quite sure. Um, whoever they were must have had a good view on it. Uh, you can also spot that there is a, uh, a very shocked looking woman um, who has just left the Tiger's Eye Agency, who is pressed up against the door, looking pale as a sheet, completely stunned. Um, and then you can hear coming from just off the way uh, what sounds like a man's voice kind of asking what's going on or something like that. Um, you can also hear the very faint distant whistle of the city watch, um, as in they're being, they're converging on this location. Aquamamba. Mamba mercenaries, assemble! Shit's gone south, plan B, escape! 
Are you still in the... And then I'm going to roll. <laughs> you're in the tavern, yeah. Yeah. We've no, not literally, we've all gone. Yeah. You're on your own. <laughs> I'm just going into like my okay. mode. You say I'm that. I'm going full on uh -huh. halfling hungover Mission Impossible mode. <laughs> okay. And I'm like... Dun, dun, dun. So you're sneaking around the tavern. <laughs> I'm doing you... my own routine of escape. To so get what? Out the back door? Out the back door. Okay. So you kind of roll to the left, roll to the right, you Checking sneak up. Corners. Um, and you make your way to the back exit, you kick it open. Yeah. And you get back into the back alleyway, ready to escape. <coughs> cool. <laughs> <laughs> There's nobody there. Seems like a clean getaway. Perfect. Um, Boomer, so you were checking the gnome's body. So see, yeah. you flip him over, and you begin rummaging around, and yeah, you do in fact um, see a lapel with a dandelion Aww. on the gnome's body. Shit. Um, there's also, you can tell that the gnome has something else on them as well. Um, but you can see that people are beginning to now look around. They're like, you can see people coming out of their homes. What's going on? Who are you? What? And they're beginning to ask questions. Do you want to just try and take whatever he has um, easily, or do you want to try and sneak it away? I'd like to try and sneak it out. Okay, so that's going to be a sleight of hand check. Oh, not a stealth check. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. You see a few people. Uh, you can see... Some of the residents like, what's what's that goblin doing with that man's body? Oh my god! We need it. Whatever it is, we need wow. it. Wow, that's, that's a lot of dice. Lot of dice. Uh, that, sweet. That's a success. That, whatever that is. I don't know. I heard a lot of dice rumbling from the other side of the room. So six. Um, Thirty-two. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> 32, it's 32. 12, 13, 14. 14 plus 18, uh, plus one more, so 33. Oh, come on, I didn't know about the other one. So you, um, <laughs> you notice that people's eyes are on you, and so you quickly rummage through this, this gnome's pockets. Um, there's a couple of things you find. There's actually something you notice as well. You notice that there is seaweed clinging to his boots and a strong sewage smell coming from him. Like, he's been wading in a sewer recently. And there is actual seaweed, like, you know, from the docks or the sea or somewhere like that. <laughs> you grab two things. A wooden chip with a smiling mermaid. Also a pouch with five 100 gold gemstones. Cool. Well, let's and you like, <laughs> into your pouches, into your pockets. Um, <laughs> and then you back off like as these people are like, what are you doing, goblin? Get away from him. Yeah. He killed that man. People, oh. people are being dumb and just like Come on. in shock, blaming everybody. Oh, I know it's an explosion, but this is an amateur's explosion. Mine has colour. <laughs> I mean, wait, I didn't do nothing. <laughs> but yeah, you can see people are beginning to look around, asking themselves questions. You've maybe got like two minutes before the guards arrive. Is there anything else you want to do? Can I? I probably remember the people that were chasing the gnome. Uh -huh. And I feel like with my natural 20 on <laughs> investigation, I have a moment of clarity. Like that explosion, if something's clicked in my brain. Yeah. Can I see anyone in the crowd that's gathering around now, the third person that is not visible on the floor? Oh, give me a... Give me a perception check. Cool, I'm taking three dice. Uh, wow. Uh, 12. 14, Big plus money. 11, Sylvia. 25, minus perception. I always say minus for this guy. Uh, 25. 25. You glance around. There's no sign of that third figure ah. here. But you can hear um, that there is a man nearby shouting like, Hey, wh wh where are you going? Kind of thing. Like he's kind of calling out as if somebody just run past him. Okay. The other thing you notice as well is that um, there appears to be... Out of the halfling performers, uh, the young boy had obviously stepped away long enough that he hadn't been caught in the explosion. And he's actually, it looks like he's pulling something out of a water barrel. Like he, you see him pull out some sort of, uh, you're not quite sure, it looks like a string of beads that he's, it's like he's looking around and he's pulling it out, looking at it curiously as if he's just found it. <coughs> okay, could I grab Boomer and uh -huh. as I'm running towards the noise of <laughs> the person who's like, hey, where are you going? Uh -huh. I want to drop Boomer down next to the, <laughs> the, the, half, kid. the halfling guy. Okay. It's, so, like a little, it's like a 12 year old halfling child. Boomer, I think this one did. I put him to deal with this guy. I've got to go. See ya. <laughs> okay. And then you're going to run off towards where you heard the man. Yes. Okay. Flo, what are you doing? 
Um, <laughs> sure. So the woman in the Bostonist shop, mm -hmm. ups, like, can I get to her? She's easily? like peering over. You can probably like make your way on the roof and just shout over to her if you want, like, or you could climb down and then go into her shop and then and make your way up towards. Do I, for, before I get off the roof, do I see anyone from an above view on the streets? Because I heard the man asking what's going on. Do I see anything? You'd have to give me another perception check. Natural 20. Natural Ooh. 20. Total? Yep. Wait. 20. 26. Okay. Yeah. Ooh. So, um, you glance around and there's obviously a lot of people either moving away or converging, converging oh, on, converging? Converging. <laughs> converging. converging. They're converging on the scene, curious as to Was what's happened. Like, they see this explosion, there's a diversion. <laughs> Excellent. Um, you, there's a couple of things. You can see a contingent of city guards literally a minute away from this kind of area that are about to descend. You can also see one of the Griffin cavalry flying directly towards the square. Running away from the scene, um, there's one figure which catches your attention and it looks like he made his way and is running off towards a place called the North Ward, which is like a richer part of the city. Um, the only reason that you take notice of him, because there's a lot of people moving away, but he's constantly glancing back. And when he does, you can see that uh, the side of his face is all really badly burned, um, as if it's just been caught in a, in a fire. Um, and he kind of glances back and then he disappears into the crowd heading towards this north ward. Um, quite far away, he's had quite a lead. Um, but you see that heading off. Uh, Boomer, you are dropped in front of a small boy <laughs> who's looking at you like, Hey, he did nothing! <laughs> my friend over there says you did do something. I did nothing! They killed my family! Uh, oh. Well, my family's dead! Ah, uh, <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> we'll deal with that in a second. What's that in your hand? He like holds his hand, he's just like, no, just something I found. It's mine. Where'd you find it? He like points at this barrel, which looks like it collects rainwater. It fell out of the sky after all my family died. The gods <laughs> have given it to me. It's, it's the, the gods have rewarded me. Yeah, you don't think it's something responsible for an explosion? So it might explode and take you with it. <laughs> his eyes kind of, <laughs> and he holds it out. And you can see him holding it out. And it appears to be a, Almost like a pearl necklace, but instead of pearls, they're orange beads. Um, there's three of them left. There's like three orange beads left on this uh, this necklace. He knows. Shut up. Um, <laughs> yeah. Would I recognise it as an explodey? You can make um, an arcana check for me. I could, couldn't I? Um, sure could, pal. Screw it. I'm gonna take one dice. Let's see how many there are. Oh. Not a few left. 14, uh, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. 20. Oh, I mean, I'm ramping up the DCs in this one. You think it's a magic item, but you're not sure what it does. You think that it's probably magical. But it looks like there's beads missing from it. Ah, uh, yes, certainly. Yeah, that definitely looks explodey, mate. How do you know you're a goblin? You don't know nothing. My name's Boomer. <laughs> <laughs> Look at me. My name's Martin Tig. That's cute. But I'm an explosions expert, and that is missing some explosions. You on it. killed my family! You're I did the not murderer. kill your family. Murderer. I'm gonna grab him. Okay. Can I just grab him? Just be like, listen, listen to me, shit. mate. <laughs> <laughs> listen to you, like shit. <laughs> You're oh gonna give God. that to me, or I'm gonna cut your ear off. <laughs> <laughs> That's an intimidate with advantage. Oh, <laughs> guess what? Boom is proficient in. Uh, yeah, screw it. Why not? Uh, okay, yep, three of those E6s. It's got a badge as well. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh. But one the advantage was wasn't one. great, yeah. One was an eight, uh, but, but then I also rolled six, 14, a six, 20, and a 25. five, and then I've got six on intimidation. 31. Poor Martin Tegg. <laughs> uh, I rolled quite well on him. Uh, I got like a nice uh, 21, 25, but it's not enough. Uh, you hear the sensation of, of water running, and you can see just a stain spreading out over his britches uh, as he just drops this necklace on the ground, uh -oh. and he's just start. <laughs> my family's dead! Don't cut my ear off! I need that to do! <laughs> <laughs> just starts crying, and that's when you see the guards, like, literally pull in, and a woman is like, That goblin's going to kill that boy! I'm just gonna pat him on the side, though. Good one, mate. Now, you ain't seen me, right? <laughs> the, the guards are all like, Boo! 
Stop blowing whistles, pulling out truncheons, like, get the goblin! He's clearly the one that killed them all! And they yeah. come barreling um, towards you. I'm gonna off ski. Can I use um, nimble escape? To, oh, you can dash, yeah. To run away? Yeah, you can use a bonus action to dash. Uh, I can disengage and hide with it. Oh, okay, so you wanna try and. Yeah, give me a stealth check then. Mm -hmm. <laughs> hide behind the boy. <laughs> <laughs> Kill the goblin! No, Clearly it's I'm, responsible! I'm taking more dice. Racism! Oh, five D6. <laughs> They're gonna kill me! I I'm a know. goblin and I just threatened a small child! Oh, you've used so many. <laughs> oh my, look at her pile of dice! <laughs> oh, it's a good thing I did as well. Uh, so that's a one. bad roll. And that one. But then I've got uh, six, um, <laughs> 10, 14, it 18, matter, 19. 20, 21, 22, 23. It does still matter. I think within that one, you pick up the kid, you throw him at the nearest <laughs> car, it's like, he tries to grab the kid, and then you're like, Nyeh, and you, and it's like Nyeh, and you scramble off into the alleyways. Um, you probably actually encounter Aquamamba, who's <laughs> sneaking his way through the back alleys, trying to make his escape, as you see Boomer like scoot through a tiny little gap in a fence, and it's like, mm. good. You're the only one with this follow protocol. You I'm have 10 out. seconds. I'm like, yeah, I'm just just going. Going. <laughs> and you can Stop see Boomer's like, look at the protocol. I don't think I laid out the protocol to everybody. Um, yeah. Are you going to follow Boomer, Echo Member, or do you want to peek in to see? I'd like to think I'm definitely making little. I'm going to run along behind. Okay. So, you're skipping a few stages of the protocol, but good job. Where's everybody else? Hey! Are you shouting? <laughs> Slow down, Goblin! <laughs> <laughs> cool. Uh, uh, Bertie oh, and Fleur, sorry. what do you guys want? So, Bert, let's do Bertie, because you wanted to speak to the, the lady, didn't you? Oh, so uh, so I'm, I chase after the sound of... Okay, hey, so where the, you going? the guy, yeah. So you eventually come, you, you move through into the, the sort of north entrance to the alleyway, and tucked onto the corner is uh, like a carpenter's, and you can see that there's a, a human man outside, um, a half-elf, sorry, He's kind of got like, still got a saw in one hand and he's talking to a bunch of other kind of locals, seemingly kind of perplexed at something. He's like, is everything all right? You know, what's going on? Uh, no time to talk. Which one of you saw where the guy went? He's like, what, what, what guy? The guy, the, the guy that we did, we did go and run away. <laughs> I saw a bloke with a burnt face. And yeah, that he, guy. Where'd he go? Where'd he go? Where'd he, he ran, go? He went off down that street and he went north towards That's the That's perfect. North I'm going to grab him, pick him up, and run. Wait, 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 what? Point the direction. He killed Grundle. <laughs> Give me a strength check. <laughs> I'm definitely taking some dice for this. Was the guy too far away in the crowd for me to like... Uh, he kind of was doing that, he was doing shot. the classic spy movie thing of like, you saw him enter the crowd, and then he merged with the crowd. Yes. He Assassin's is the Creed. crowd. 17. Natural 20. Oh. <laughs> this guy is a carpenter, like he seems fairly built, and as you go pick him up, he's like, oh, big man, calm down. I ain't going anywhere. Point the direction, which way? This he way, went towards way. the north wall, that's all I saw. Which way is north? He points. <laughs> That way! Oh, that's north. Okay, see ya! <laughs> and I'm running. Okay, you just chase off in that direction. Yeah, and I suppose I'm just okay. constantly dashing as well with yeah, my cutting yeah. out. Okay, so you're just like, you're just like, just running after <laughs> Well, what is your constitution score modifier? My constitution, my constitution. Constitution. Uh, it is plus four. Plus four, okay. So you can basically, what we'll say is that over this, we'll do a chase in a second. We'll, we'll go wow. through an actual chase okay. sequence. Who wants that um, chase? <laughs> Fleur, what are you doing? Ah. I have to get on my chase rules. Chase rules? Do I rules? see Bertie? <laughs> you, yeah, you would see okay. Bertie bombing it towards where you've seen this bloke. Can you've I, seen this guy. Are there rooftops the whole way along? Because it's quite like it's I filled, will say filled with buildings, it's, right? Waterdeep is a metropolis. It's like jam-packed with buildings. You can absolutely jump yeah. across the rooftops. I'm gonna, I'm gonna cool. rooftop it. Um, let me see if I can just find my stuff. You've made a pyramid from the amount of dice you've used. <sighs> Look, I have a bunch of racists running after me. Okay. <laughs> and I just right. threatened a small boy. Um, so, uh, you two are escaping the guards who have now descended on this this uh, square um, uh, with uh, things in hand. You've got this necklace, Kim. You can write down you have... Oh, you did pick it up. ...bead necklace. Yeah. yeah. Lucky. Yeah. Well, I intimidated the crap out of that boy. You've got bead necklace. Magical um, bead necklace. Yes, so you've got that until, but you know that you'll need to get an identify spell to actually figure out exactly what it is. And I've also got the, the stuff Spike from... Chris Trot's OOC knowledge. 
And I've got the, I've got the stuff from Dandelion as well. Yes, you got yeah. the gems and the token. There was definitely no sign of like a stone on him. No, no. no. Given that we were told that he had the stone. Yes, yeah. very much so. You did not find the stone. You went okay. through his pockets good and proper. Right. It's like a good little Bertie, girl. Bertie, let us say the man had a considerable lead on you. Because um, he, you were distracted by Grundle, and he managed to make off while other people were doing <laughs> that. We're going to say that he off. has. I'm going to say he would have had two full turns of movement, so he's going to be 180 feet away from you because oh, he can double, dash as well. He's double he dashing can, as well. He can dash as well. So, do I get any bonus from being able to dash as a bonus? Action? So, the way this is going to work is you're going to start at zero. He's going to start at 180 feet, and we're just going to go sequentially. You and Flar go, and then he's going to go. Okay. Um, okay. Um, so, uh, we'll start at the top of the round, which we'll just do, in fact, roll initiative for me. Just the two of you and then my guy will roll initiative. Nice. Nice. Hey, what'd you get? Damn it, Right, so who's, who's higher out of the two of you? Me. So Fleur's, what else did you get, Fleur? 18. So you got 18. I was ready to brag. <laughs> um... <laughs> So, Fleur got 18. What'd you get, Bertie? 17. Okay. So, Fleur. What, what you, so, you're chasing so, after him on the rooftops. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, you give can me... I, so, you can move 30 feet. What can I get with my one level of rogue? <laughs> uh, well, that gives you expertise in sneak attack. Damn it. So, you don't get the dash, Damn sadly. It. Okay. So, you can move 30 feet, and then you could dash for another 30 feet. But you're going to need to make athletics checks every time you move, because you're jumping across rooftops. So, well, we'll make it, and once okay. per turn, you make an athletics check to keep yourself on the rooftops. Sure. How far away is he from me currently? 180 feet? 180 feet. We'll say it's the same okay. distance from Bertie. So, but he's still not visible. Is he visible to he's, me? He, I will say that he is visible, but he will have total cut. He'll have, ex like, uh, three quarters cover, which means his AC is much higher, um, and he'll have bonuses to dexterity saving throws. Even if I get closer? If you get closer, can then maybe, get, maybe not. Can I get 60 foot closer by doing it? So you move and then dash. And dash. Yeah. So and give me an athletics <coughs> check to see if you stay up on top of the roofs. Natural 20. Natural 20. No problem. Nice. You just leap across, -ah, leaping your way across the rooftops. Um, um, you slide down uh, one of them and then leap across to the next one. Don't worry, I'll fall flat on my face eventually. Okay, so that's 60 <laughs> feet. So, so you are now 120. Can I get a better view on him from here? Yeah, he's still going to have some cover though. You make a shot. I'm going to make. You're going to have to spend your action surge. Yeah, I'm going to spend my action surge, uh -huh. and I'm going to spend a grit point. Okay. To do a winging shot, which is where I can attempt to topple a moving target. Okay, great. Give me a tech roll. Okay. Oopsies. Whoopsies. Whoa. Oh, I God, mean, that's pretty the trash. The D6 though. are good, though. 12, uh, 15, so, 21. 12, 15, 21. 21. 22. Add that, yeah, sure. 28 to hit. Yeah, that's going to hit. And There's 21 on the dice. So you do damage, and then I'm guessing I get a saving throw. It's uh, 120 feet. Saving. <laughs> yeah, with the rifle, I think that that's... Yeah. Still within minimum range. It is. Uh, a strength saving throw. Okay, I'm going to add my last 2d6, uh, which is going to be a 18. 18. Damn it! Okay, but you still take damage. So, so. he still takes damage. Um, Let's roll that out. Fine. Damn it. Oh well. That would have been really cool if it cool. helped him. Yeah, give me the damage. Uh, and, don't forget, and you will have a plus 1d6 for sneak attack on this. Because uh, you are hitting him while he's unaware. Not really expecting to get uh. sniped. Damn dice. No. I'm looking at them longingly. 25 damage. So, across the city of Waterdeep, uh, you're perched up on one of these rooftops. You hear a... As this uh, sniper rifle bullet wings down. You see it hit the guy, uh, grazing along his leg, causing a deep bloody gash. He doesn't stumble to the ground. He just throws himself into an alleyway, um, kind of giving himself temporarily out of your line of sight. But yeah, definitely uh, causing a grievous wound to him. Um, and then that ends your turn. Bertie. Okay, I'm going to double dash. So you dash, dash, and then move. So that's uh, 90 feet. Is that something I can do? 
where you can go, you can move movement, and then oh, spend I your see. action to move to dash, and then bonus action dash because of cunning action. Wow. So what's your movement speed? Thirty feet. Uh, well, it's, I'm, that, it? it's yeah, it's thirty. So I yeah, get nine, not a high level barbarian. So I can get ninety feet. But so you go includes, ninety feet, but that's your whole turn. That'd be my whole turn. So, so that means there'd be a ninety turns, foot difference. I'd catch up. Basically. Well, he cannot be. He's that depends on what he does. Yeah. Um, at the top of the round, let's roll for a complication on the ground chase. A complication? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, um, as you're running, Axes start um, swinging um, you chase him into an alleyway, and you can see that the alleyway cuts between several um, kind of poor looking houses. He hasn't quite reached the, the posh district yet. He's still running through this kind of worn down part of the old city um, and pouring out from a sewer grate uh, a swarm of rats comes scurrying past. Mm. Uh, he's going to make a deck saving throw, which he passes, um, and he just leaps over them. Mm -hmm. um, Bertie, give me the same thing, just to stay on course. I'll just use one d6 for this one. Natural 20, with a two on top. You, you, yeah. I imagine that you don't really leap over it. Maybe you just boot loads of the rats out the way. <laughs> I just, just run. Or you just stamp on them, on them yeah. as just they're running just like... through. <laughs> <laughs> um, as they squeak past. <laughs> Um, on his turn, he is going to yeah, he's going to do the same thing. He's going to uh, he's going to move. He's going to dash. He's only going to go sixty, but then he's going to attempt to hide amongst a crowd. Okay. Uh, Fleur. I see where I still spot so perception him. check. Twenty-one. Yeah, you can see him trying to merge into a. Uh, uh, several alleyways, trying to like crouch down and gain some cover and things like that, but you can still spot him easily. Can I move the maximum amount that I can move? So that'd be 60 feet, but that's going to be an athletics check, please. Uh, 12. 12 on the athletics. Mm. You go stumbling down. You make it. You make it 30 feet. You use your movement, but then as you're leaping across to the next building, you you just cut the jump short. You end up hitting the side and then scrambling down. You're going to take damage. <laughs> oh, you no. take eight points of damage oh, wow. um, as you kind of hit a fire escape and then land on the actual <sighs> streets below, um, and you only go 30 feet. I'm probably out of this race. Um, I can't be as fast as you. Um, still shooting, aren't you? Yeah, shoot. Just but you are uh, currently prone. She's got to reload the rifle. Uh, this thing, um, and you are currently prone. Yes, I'm losing half movement. So you are 90 feet currently, and he is uh, that amount. Bertie. Um, okay, I will. So, if how far away is he in in this crowd? So is he, he is about. Uh, I w he is 50 feet away from you, but you need to spot him first. You need to give me a perception check. I will not do a perception check. Okay. I will run up to the crowd with the bonus action dash as well. Okay. And I'll just yell. Okay. So you want to try and disperse the crowd. You killed Grunnel! And that will just be, can I do like an intimidation or yeah. something? And yeah, it's just sure, to get sure, everyone sure. to Yeah, just a scatter. big hulking goliath running in. Absolutely. 2d6. Oh no! Wow. Um, that's a one plus six plus three. That is ten. Uh, plus intimidation, thirteen. Thirteen. This is water deep. You're like, you killed Grundle! A few people are like, who's Grundle? <laughs> should this guy be running around? Maybe we should call the guards, but they don't seem intimidated at all. And you've got no eyes on this guy. You don't know where he oh, is. Oh, damn it. Okay. He is going to make a dash for it. So he, you see him break cover, and he just runs. Uh, he's going to move, dash, uh, dash again to go 90 more feet. Uh, oh, he can do that as well, the double dash. Yeah, you only went Damn. 60 because you did the um, intimidate, so... But he only went 60 the turn before that. So yes. He's kind of not narrowed it. So uh, you see him just make a dash for it, again, leaping down into one of the alleys. Let's roll for another complication. Mm. So, Fleur, um, are you going to attempt to pursue? You're currently prone, so it's half movement to stand up. Yep. Okay, probably. so you go move half movement to stand up, and then you're going to dash. Yep. So you're going to go 45 feet this turn. Okay. Bertie, uh, when you start running, um, following him into the alleyway, a pack of wild dogs is uh, fighting <laughs> in the alleyway, uh, barking and fighting over some sort of bone. Um, yeah, you can either attempt to, uh, you can either try to like <laughs> jump over them, which will be acrobatics, or try and avoid them, like skirt past them, or you can just try and barrel through them. 
Is one of the complications two men carrying a pane of glass? <laughs> <laughs> we'll find out, won't we? Won't we, Kim? <laughs> it's like, no, that one. I will dare. live for it if it is. <laughs> Probably already written down, actually. <laughs> um, could I... Which one is it, actually? I want to... Is know. it? Uh, da, 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 da. Right, can make it a pain of glass. <laughs> uh, a large window or similar. <laughs> <block>. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> the system works. Yep. Um, uh, so yeah, you can. What do you want to do? You can either try and avoid them, or you can just try and barrel through them. So the other option was to jump over them. Did you it, say that was yeah. just acrobatic? Are you trying to like dodge around them, jump over them, or do you want to try and barrel through them? What do you want to do? How do you want to avoid these dogs? I mean, I'd like to. Otherwise, they're going to slow you down and probably bite you. As if, as if they are a hurdle. Just try and leap over them. Leap over them. Athletics, Jack. Dogs. Athletics. <laughs> these dogs didn't see me coming. I don't feel like you two have even used any of these D6. He's been drunk. I've not used yeah. any of them. I've used some, but not not on the same level. Because he keeps him. getting himself out of the situation. Like, I'm gonna go out the back door. <laughs> Great leader. Great uh, leader. Twenty-eight. <laughs> twenty-eight. You sail <laughs> over these dogs. Um, without any <laughs> things, and then you're just going to completely dash again. And then double dash, so I'm now right next to this guy. You are not next to this guy. What? This guy had some movement. I thought he was 90 feet for me. He was 180 feet to start with, ahead of you. Yeah. But then he only he did 60. Him. You only did 60 last turn. Yeah, to get up to he him is when he was in the crowd. I'm tracking it as the movement goes. Oh, I like, thought I was right next to him when he was in the crowd. No, no, no. Well, no, he was still ahead of you. No, he was still ahead of you. Oh, that's why I was trying to disperse. Oh, okay. Um, so he is currently, I will tell you that he is 330 feet from where he started and you are 240 feet from where you started. Um, I'm start so you have stuff, 60, you have 90 feet to catch up with him. Cool. So okay. you just dash after him. You can see him 90 feet ahead of you, um, as he runs past, uh, and three couples of people with panes of glass. <laughs> yeah, oh, no. <laughs> he is gonna... Mm, One's green close. Glass. He's going to attempt yeah. another. He's going to attempt to hide from you again. Uh, this time he ducks into a complex maze-like corridor of alleyways and is going to try and lose you in there. Uh, let's make a stealth check for him. He's going to move sixty feet and then it's he's going to try Perfect place this. to go. So he moves sixty feet up and then he's going to attempt to hide. Um, and then uh, at the top of the round, complication. 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 Okay, Fleur, what are you doing? Chasing after these guys? Yes, do guy, I actually. see him? Can I make a perception check and see if I see uh, him? You can, he's considerably further ahead, but sure, make a perception check for me. How far ahead? So he is currently, you are 100, uh, 135 feet, he is at 390 feet. So he is 255, <coughs> yeah. Away from me. Yeah, 255 uh, feet away. Nowhere near him, I'll just Yeah, keep falling running. off that roof really uh, crippled you there. I'll just keep running. You're just gonna run? Okay. Um, so you can go, so you go up to 195. Um, at the top of the round, uh, well, Bertie, uh, as you're running after this guy, uh, complication, a barrel of oil slips <laughs> off a nearby wagon, Jeez. coating the ground. Um, <laughs> what, do you, what would you like to do? Chase after him? I think that you should just slip and slide. It. Yeah, like, okay, give me an acrobatics check. Acrobatics? That's the worst one. There's only three <laughs> dice left. There's only three dice left. Yeah, I know. You, you got, and Kim of you. You got, you got fifteen minutes. <laughs> We're to use doers. It. <laughs> that was free try. How bad? Six. <laughs> you go a slide, but your the second your foot touches it, you're not used to this underground. Whoa! And you just oh. fall prone. So I keep sliding, right? Uh, I will say you can slide 10 feet. 10? Yeah. Speed I was going. Um, well, <laughs> so here's what happened. You slide 10 feet, you then fall prone. On your bum. So we'll put you at, so where are you? You are at now 250. But now you're prone, you would have to spend half your movement to stand back up. So you need to spend 15 feet of movement. Okay, okay. So I can still do 45, 75 feet of movement. Uh, with my double dash as well. You do 65 more feet because you move 10 feet to start with. Yeah. So you do 65 more feet. Cool. So you chase after him, but you can see now he's, oh, he's running, but he now has to, he traverses this slippery oil slick as well. 
just huh? to me the, because of the way the initiative <laughs> yeah. work and I'm doing the complication at the top of the round like okay. I should really do it before he goes um, but you see as he goes to you know the oil slicks in front of him he just kind of effortlessly glides over it keeping his balance <gasps> damn it so um, cool and then just seen what he did makes just did that a I think you probably tried to I like to think that you tried to yeah. Really you can see <laughs> he is nearly on the edge of escaping from you. Like he's getting so far away that eventually he's just going to be able to vanish into a crowd. Um, Fleur. Ah, he's too far away from me. He's you. really far away from you, sadly. How far is he? He's still like over he's like 195 feet. feet away from you at this point. Because he's a nippy boy. Scary. Man. I'll just keep going on the off chance something goes wrong for yeah, me. Yeah, that's that's the smart thing to do in case anything goes wrong. Okay, so you run 60, uh, running across the ground. Um, Bertie. So if I... Let me... Our complication. Okay. <laughs> this is a maze-like uh, narrow corridor of alleyways. Um, so I can't even see him even if I... It's like a twisting thing. You're either... It's like a maze of like... There's all these different crates and barrels all over the place. You either have to try and sort of... Acro like kind of deftly move your way through them or try and navigate a path with uh, your mind <laughs> and navigate the alleyway the right maze. okay so if in i was to palace. oh god <laughs> that's the worst place Birdies. to be basically you can either make an acrobatics or an intelligence check to navigate this uh, maze of uh, intelligence and objects <laughs> okay well. so so if i so i have to do that I, i'll do that now so basically it will cut it will mean it will turn into difficult terrain if you fail I see. Which okay. will slow you down. Well, I'll do the acrobatics. I'll take one more d6. Okay. There's only one left. Uh, 14, uh, 16. Just enough, actually. Oh, nice. You kind of, you, you just don't try and navigate the maze. You just try and run through it and deftly maneuver your way through these barrels and crates yeah, like to avoid butterfly. slowing you down. Yeah, sting like a bee. Swing like, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, so it doesn't slow you down. So you're going to just completely dash off. So how far away is he from me? So from you, you are currently at 315. He is, uh, I think, 85. No, five, 75 feet away from you. So far. So... So close. Oh god, he's like 15 feet. Just so we, I'd, I'd have to use my movement, my bonus, and my. So you won't be able to attack. Although, him. could I? I'd have 15 feet of movement left if once I caught up to him. What well, I... no, you would if you move 30 feet and then bonus action dash 30 feet. Yeah. You'd have 15. He'd be 15 feet ahead of you. But then if I actioned a, you go 15 movement. foot ahead of him. Yeah. I'd be 15 feet in front of him. Yeah, you can try and like go for an opportunity attack or something like that. And it's you can see that. that he's just about to make his way out onto a huge, crowded plaza. Classic. We see the camera panning over all these people with their baby strollers and carriages. And <sighs> it's just full of tourists. Time. He could blend in the second he reaches there. He's going to be gone. I would like to um, move 30 feet. Right. You move 30 feet up. Bonus action, 30 feet. So I'm now 15, 15 feet, feet away from him. him. Yep. And in that entire motion, I'd like to find just a big rock or something. Okay. One and of the once, barrels that you once, passed. Yeah, there you go. And once I get to so the end of that, barrel. I just uh, launch it okay. to try and smash him with it. So there's going to be two checks we're going to make here. The first is a strength check to make sure that, you know, when you grab this barrel, you can actively pull it up and throw it. your hand. Uh, it's <laughs> it's on. like, yeah. yeah. So give me it's, a strength check. There. What a waste. <laughs> uh, I won't use a d6 for this one. 15. 15. You pull it, but I'm going to say it's heavier than you expected, and you're going to have disadvantage now, and you're going to have to make a ranged attack roll. Um, so this is just going to be d20 plus your dexterity. Right, well, I'll use and the final d6 on this one. No! Oh, oh it's four plus my, plus my dexterity. Yeah. That's four. Four. So you hoist up this, um, you hoist up this huge barrel. Uh, you like Donkey Kong style, but it's <laughs> you kind of you pull your back a little bit. You weren't expecting it to be so heavy. You throw it. The guy glances behind him, kips up onto a wall, parkour Spider-Man style. Oh. The barrel smashes down into the ground as he arches oh, his back over man. it. He flips down, lands on his feet, kind of looks at you, and you can see this half-burned face. <sighs> he just kind of grimaces at you, and then. Dashes forward, and as he reaches the crowd, 
just go. Right. Just melds into melds the in. sea of faces. Oh, um, pulls man, his hood up so Assassin's so Creed close. style. Blech. He was right Vanishes. there. He smiled at me and everything. We cut back. He grimaced at you. To <laughs> Mamba and Boomer. I've aged horribly. <laughs> Christ, I was long. Um, <laughs> We come back to you two, we got right way, as right? you hear there is a desperate search of these officers now. Um, and you can begin to hear more and more of them are approaching. The most alarming thing is the sound of wings as a... Uh, can you both make stealth checks for me, please? As you begin to hear a passing <laughs> griffin cavalry rider that Fleur had spotted earlier doing a sweep above. 21. Oh, 10. <laughs> he's not with me? <laughs> <laughs> I think at the moment he's, he's following you. Yeah, he's shouting at me, isn't he? Uh, so, so we had a 10, did you say? And what yeah. was you, what did you get, Boomer? 21. 21, okay. 21. Well. Um, so, we hear the kind of <laughs> of this griffin as it flies over. And you can see that at night time, the rider actually has uh, a magical lantern which projects its beam and is, is passing the light over. Um, and its spotlight just catches Aquamamba uh, as Put Boomer it. is there, Got it. as they look down. And being a small figure, they, they don't quite see it. They're like, there they are, get him! Um, and you, they begin to descend Turn that down. off! Um, yeah, and I think we'll Does probably... Uh, that count as a hide? Can I hide? Well, you are hiding. That was yeah. a stealth check. Okay. Yeah, you're, so they've seen Aquamamba. So I guess, Boomer, what do you do? You can see this griffin is beginning to slowly descend down uh, towards Aquamamba, but it hasn't seemed to have spotted you yet. What do you do? Uh, yeah, what do, what do you do? <laughs> hmm. Hmm. I'm going to keep hiding. Okay. Yeah, so you just slink into the shadows and back away. Yeah. Um, you got a 21. Yeah, I guess like um, uh, Aquamamba, make a perception check for me. Let's see if you spot uh, <laughs> Boomer Natural leading 20. Oh, Natural nice. 20. Wow. So you do see uh, Boomer just slink off and leave you to your fate. Um, what are you doing? <laughs> Why are you doing that? <laughs> Boomer, did you cause that explosion? No, I didn't. Shut up. So, uh, Aquamamba, they don't, they've not seen uh, Boomer. You can see on the back of this uh, griffin, this huge, powerful beast, head of an eagle, body of a lion with feathery wings, um, a man in full plate, or sorry, half plate armor, levels a crossbow down at you. Whoa! Um, one hand shining the light. Uh, don't move, sir. don't move. You're under arrest by the city watch. That's really absurd. <laughs> you are under arrest for fleeing Why? the scene. We're going to question you about this explosion. You're coming with us. Don't try and move. You can question me, but <laughs> you ain't arresting me. Back <laughs> <laughs> So you're going to try and run as well. <laughs> okay. Uh, so uh, how are you going to try and get away? Are you going to try and hide or are you just dashing? Are you just trying to run Spend for a it? key point Okay. to do my... Uh, uh, to, to boost your running away. Yes. Okay. No flyer of blows, he's going to punch the man. Okay. <laughs> Step of the wind. Step of the wind. Well, this man will get one shot off as he was ready in action to shoot you if you're trying Disengage. to run. Uh, are you disengaging or are you Step of uh, the winding to dash? I'm gonna dash. Oh, there you go. Uh, so, that is a 23 to hit you. Yeah, just... I think that just... does it. So that's, that's only three points of damage, however, as this crossbow just grazes you as you're like, Ha ha! I And you <laughs> running off. Um, however, the griffin is in a quick pursuit. How do you want to try and lose them? I'm going to use my uh, well, step of the wind mm -hmm. to dash into an alleyway, mm -hmm. uh, look for the closest sewer, because that's my go-to. Okay. Uh, if I don't see one, I'm going to disguise self as okay. a barrel. Okay. <laughs> Disguise self can't turn you into objects. <laughs> Disguise self turns you bag. into other yeah. human beings. Illu In like minor case, illusion or silent image can make you look like. I will go up against a stack of crates and texture my skin as a wood <laughs> crate. <laughs> You can just okay. get another person. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> roll a d20. On an even number, yeah, there is a sewer. Great. That's a natural one. That's an odd number. An There's odd no number. sewer grates. So you run in, <laughs> so you're like, huh, Aquamamba. <laughs> Active camouflage. <laughs> like... <laughs> you can roll a stealth check. Yeah. Um, 
<laughs> you don't get advantage, but you can roll a d6 on top of it. Thank you. Well, if I'm inspiring myself. <laughs> uh, 14 plus my stealth. Yes. 20. Oh, wow. Wow, holy crap. So you watch. The spotlight passes over the crates. <laughs> you freeze. You know that if you just stand completely still, they'll never see you. You Passes the crate. over you. You become the crate. The Griffin Cavalry Rider continues on. And I guess that's where we'll finish things off for this week. With the, the Griffin Cavalry Rider searching for Aquamamba, but Aquamamba for now having escaped. <laughs> um, that's a great... That's a great point to end, I think, of a great mental image. Oh, oh my um, God. So that's what we're going to end this week uh, for A Rose Gambit. That's what we call this series, isn't it? You almost said Rose, didn't you? I, I don't know what I'm saying anymore. This, this game is going to break me. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed it. We'll be back next Monday for the episode three. Uh, of this series. Don't mm -hmm. forget, if you go on Idle Champions, you can contribute to the dice pool. They didn't leave me any dice. Yeah. What a damn so you shame. need to use more of them so that I can get some eventually. Yeah. Because yeah. they can't no. spend them all. You need to get us more because we ran out. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So I we could have caught that guy. It's free to we play. Could've you could have. They absolutely could have. It's free to play. You don't need to pay anything. You just need to complete quests or play free play, and then you can join in. It's a really cool game. Me and Tom have been playing a load of it. Mm -hmm. Check it out. Uh, thank you, Wizard of the Coast, for also sponsoring it. Thank Don't forget, you. Dragon Heist is now available on D&D Beyond, and it's out in bookstores and your local gaming stores on the 18th of September. It's really, really cool. I am cherry-picking bits from it. So some of the stuff that happened today is from the module, mm -hmm. and then some of it's stuff that I've added in, so we don't give away too many spoilers. You can check that out. You can check out more D&D from us on Sundays, 5 p.m. UK time, that's 9 a.m. Pacific, over on twitch.tv forward slash yogscast or twitch.tv forward slash highrollersdnd. There's no stream this week. follow us on Twitter. Because that's the best place to find out what we're up to, including notifications to remind you of this stream. It's at highrollersdnd on Twitter. There you can do that. There is no, we don't have a stream this week on our normal High Rollers channel, but we will be back the week after that. Gives you a chance um, to catch up on our VODs. Yes, yeah. which are on our YouTube channel, which you can also check out. Uh, you Search can do for High Rollers d, d And I think that's it. We're going to wrap things up there. We hope you have a lovely time. Enjoy the rest of the, the programming on twitch.tv forward slash dnd. We'll see you next Monday for more Rogue's Gambit. Thanks for watching. Bye. See ya. Guess more dice. Bye -bye. More dice. <laughs>